The ocean is home to an enormous variety of life forms. So many living things depend on it for resources. It is easily taken for granted, resulting in irreversible problems that lead ultimately to mass extinction of species. It is important that all the measures are taken to repair all the damages that have been done and to prevent future problems too. The four main causes are overfishing, pollution, runoff fertilizer and increase in carbon dioxide levels. Overfishing is defined as a process in which more fish are caught and aren't replaced at the same rate. This disturbs the equilibrium. The organism isn't given enough time to reproduce and this leads to the species being endangered and ultimately extinct. An example is the overfishing of cod as it was a source of income for many fishermen in the UK and this caused the species to become almost extinct. In Australia, according to the Australian Statistics Bureau, of the 18 stocks classified as overfished or subject to overfishing in 2008, 13 were overfished and 8 were subject to overfishing. Three of the fish stocks, Southern Bluefin Tuna, Jackass Morwong and Upper Slope Gulper Sharks, were both overfished and subject to overfishing. The highly migratory Southern Bluefin Tuna has been classified as overfished since 1992. The graph illustrates the percentage of Australian fish stocks that are overfished or subject to overfishing. Overfishing is justified through the statement of consumerism. There is demand for the product and companies do anything to meet that demand. There are many views to this concept, the view of the environmentalists, the view of the fishermen and the view of the large fisheries. In the scientific basis, overfishing is not supported at all due to the fact that it can wipe out species completely. Another problem is the bycatch from the nets. Vulnerable species like turtles get caught in the net. They are re-released dead. The repetition of this practice causes larger amounts of organisms to be killed unnecessarily. The fishermen are also negatively affected by this process. Fishing giants catch the majority of fish, leaving the local fishermen to suffer as fishing is their only source of income. Pollution is the introduction of harmful toxins into the environment. Pollution to the water causes detrimental effects on the organisms that form the marine ecosystem. There are many processes that cause pollution. Disposal of waste products in a damaging way leads to stress being applied to the marine organisms. An example is plastic bags being ingested by fish. A university study done by the University of Hawaii stated that there was a large extent of sewage and other liquid waste being dissolved into the ocean. This causes the organisms in the ocean to suffer. Pollution of the aquatic environment also includes oil spills and air pollutants. The graph illustrates the main causes of pollution in the ocean. It can be seen that the major causes are sewage, air pollution and farm runoff. Runoff of fertilizers occurs when there is too much liquid for the soil to absorb and therefore it flows into water masses. This causes many problems as the chemicals affect the wildlife negatively. It disrupts the homeostasis of the environment. It changes the balance and therefore makes the conditions unlivable for the organisms. Runoff of fertilizers cause algal blooms to form and therefore absorbing oxygen and suffocating the living organisms in the water. There are two views, one from the farmer and the other from the environmentalist. Farmers state that their use of fertilizers have been to the minimal to avoid this problem. Environmentalists state that the use of fertilizers needs to be decreased further and alternative resources should be used for this purpose. Maria Hatziolas, the World Bank Senior Coastal and Marine Specialist, shares different types of pollution and the effects on marine life. Um, now, pollution takes many forms. Uh, a typical form that you might find here would be from agricultural runoff. The fertilizers and pesticides uh, that we apply to crops run off during rain, and all of that material flows into the lagoon, the shallow water lagoon, and it compromises water quality and the ability of coral reefs to thrive. This then would have an effect on productivity. But then we have also solid waste, and islands, being islands, don't have a lot of opportunity to dispose of the waste, so much of it goes into the sea. And finally, there's the issue of plastics and the non-biodegradable aspect, which results in these plastics being um, uh, developing into very, very small particles which enter the food chain. Increase in levels of carbon dioxide raises the acidity of the water. It makes survival very hard because it causes problems to the organisms as they are no longer in their ideal environment. Many studies have shown that the increase in acidity causes shells for many shellfish and similar organisms to weaken and dissolve. This results in the destruction of the organism's only protection. A recent study showed that the increase in carbon dioxide levels altered coral reef fish behavior. Dr. Philip Monday of James Cook University explained the findings from the study conducted. 
We found that the things that can be altered are behavior such as their ability to smell predators, to turn left or right, or to hear the sounds of reefs. For example, we found that normally these little coral reef fish, they avoid the smell of predators, but if they experience a higher CO2 level, their responses change quite significantly and they can actually be attracted to the smell of predators, and so obviously that could have some pretty serious consequences. The ocean is a resource that once destroyed cannot be replaced. Steps need to be taken in order for the marine environment to regain its equilibrium. What are the things we can do to help? Only consuming fish that are approved and marked as sustainable, minimizing the dependence of fossil fuels, purchasing hybrid cars that don't cause a lot of emissions, disposing of rubbish in an environmentally friendly way, avoid misusing storm drains such as pouring hazardous waste, and finding alternatives to fertilizers that don't harm the aquatic environment.